Hello viewers, Ford DIYers here with a tutorial video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration of how a starter motor works. Also, don't forget to check out my website at www.forddiyers.com or click on the description below. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for future tutorial videos. A starter is a small electric motor and solenoid assembly intended to turn over an engine. The starter is generally located toward the bottom of the engine connected to the bell housing of the transmission, but this can vary between designs. Starting out with the basic parts of a starter when it's removed from the vehicle. Here we have the motor, a device which is able to turn electricity into mechanical force. And next we have a solenoid. The solenoid acts similar to a relay where it controls a high amperage circuit using low amperage. Beyond that it acts as an actuator to engage a mechanical device. That mechanical device is a pinion gear. Here you can see the operation of a solenoid when it's powered up. Considering it's not installed in the assembly, the actuator is pushed beyond its normal path of travel, so I will have to hold it slightly in so it operates correctly. To power up the solenoid, the small post receives battery voltage while the case is connected to ground. To explain the basic electronic control circuit for a starter, first we have the ignition switch which is the main controller of the circuit. Next is the battery that provides power to enable both the motor and solenoid to power up. The solenoid, as mentioned earlier, acts both as a relay and provides linear mechanical movement. And then finally we have the motor. The whole circuit is obviously connected by wires, and to make it a little easier to understand, the thin wires are the low amperage side, and the thick wires are the high amperage side. So the ignition switch and solenoid both operate on a low amperage circuit. The starter operates on a high amperage circuit. Then the case of the starter motor assembly is ground or earth. When the ignition switch is turned to the spring-loaded start position, this activates the solenoid that provides mechanical movement and in turn also switches the high amperage circuit, providing power to the motor. The motor then rotates. Once the spring-loaded start position is deactivated, everything pulls back into its neutral position. Moving on to disassembly, I can show you the internal components. Just to stop partway through the disassembly, here you can see how the solenoid operates within the drive housing. The solenoid works on an electromagnetic field which pulls in the plunger. Once that plunger hits the end of its travel, a contact inside engages, turning on the high amperage circuit that operates the starter motor. The movement of the plunger operates a lever that pulls out the pinion gear. Here we have the final drive assembly. This unit is what gives a starter motor its torque, so it's able to have enough power output to turn over the engine. Designs will vary between starters, so not all look the same, but will have some similarities. As you can see, there is a gear on the armature shaft and then a planetary gear set in the final drive assembly. We are looking at roughly 5 to 1 gear reduction here. Therefore, the motor will need to turn 5 times, which is equal to 1 revolution of the pinion gear. Now on the output side, we have a pinion gear. The pinion gear is what drives the ring gear on the flywheel so the engine turns over. An up-close peek of the ring gear on the flywheel when the starter is removed from the engine. The starter bolts to the bell housing of the transmission. The bell housing connects to the engine block, and the flywheel is connected to the engine crank. There is an overdrive clutch which provides torque in one direction, and free wheels in the other direction. If the pinion gear were to jam in place with the flywheel, then this feature would prevent the starter motor from overspeeding which can cause damage. Next is a helix. This is a machined screw type groove that enables the pinion to slightly rotate just before the starter motor is powered up and turns. This rotation is needed to allow the pinion gear to mesh with the ring gear. Pulling apart the motor, here is the motor case and permanent magnets inside. Some starter motors will have field windings inside the case, so this will vary depending on its design. On the rear we have a brush carrier. This allows for electricity to flow through the armature. Then finally we have the armature. When disassembling the brush carrier, we can see there is four separate brushes followed by a spring in behind. These springs keep tension on the brushes and allow the brushes to always remain in contact with the commutator of the armature when the brushes wear down during usage. As you can see, each of the brushes are worn in different lengths. Once everything has been split apart, now a recap on all the parts. Drive end housing, motor case, end cap, brushes and carrier, solenoid, armature, and final drive. The basic parts of an armature. Here is the shaft which allows the assembly to rotate in the bearing or bushing. Next is a commutator that is made up of various bars where the brushes ride. This creates a connection to allow electricity to flow through. Each of those commutator bars are connected to the armature windings. The windings are unfortunately hard to see as they are hidden mostly by the lamination stack. 
The lamination stack is broken into segments, and one of those segments are called the tooth. Now for the ending, you can see and hear a starter in operation. The heavy gauge jumper cables are providing a ground for the starter motor's case, along with the main power source, to the motor. Moving along to the other side, the power wire is connected to the switching terminal and the solenoid. Then the small terminal, which is the coil switching wire. First disconnecting the main power wire so you can see directly how the solenoid operates. This will only push the gear out. And now you can see with the main power supply hooked up, so the starter motor will power up. Be sure to stay up to date with my latest videos. Subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the button below the video. This concludes the rest of my video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you have any comments or questions please feel free to post them. Thank you for watching.